Hi, sexy people. Today, I wanted to talk to you about how to custom fit the elastic to your Zill. So, once we have a finished product, fits really nice and tight, awesome. Uh, you might get, have already have a new set of uh, Zills or finger symbols that you received in the mail, or maybe you have an existing pair and over time the elastic has worn out and it, it's just not serving its purpose anymore and you need to replace it. And so we'll go through it step by step and let's get to it. All right, so the first thing is you will have your, your Zill and we'll need to measure the slot so we'll know exactly what width of braided, braided elastic we need to use. Not all slots are the same. So we'll take our tape measure here and line it up. And you will see this particular one is three eighths inches wide. So no problem. You can go get braided elastic at any craft store or um, yeah, it's even at the grocery store sometimes. So once we have that, we'll take it through and we'll need to cut a piece. So for your thumb and also your middle finger. Now to get it cut to the proper size, what you'll need to do is wrap it around each thumb and middle finger, like so. You can see where the break is. And you will need to cut it without cutting yourself. And cut it so it just meets the beginning of your elastic. Blah, blah, blah. Got it. All right, we now have it cut. From here, for good measure, you are going to need to just flash the ends to pre prevent fraying because we don't want to have to do this any more than we have to. We could be dancing or finding shiny things. All right, so to flash it, grab any lighter, spark that baby up, boop, boop, and, and ta-da. It's now flashed. No fuzzy bits on the end. Next step. You'll take your Zill and feed it through each slot, like so. This one's being a little bit of a pesky critter. It's okay. All right, so we have it fed through. And the reason I had, I recommended that you cut it so that it just meets the the chosen finger is once you put it through the slot we're going to take it and then we're going to overlap the elastic so that overlaps by about anywhere between a sixteenth to one eighth of an inch of overlap that way the overlap and the symbol itself will create the tension in the elastic that will keep it held to your finger. So now for the boring part is we're going to overlap it and we're going to stitch it down either end just to the inside of the one over and just to the inside of the one under. Does that make sense? I think it does. So let me check my overlap here. All right and I will grab my needle and thread which I have pretty strong. And we'll get started. So once we start it, go through each layer. Oop. Okay, and not. All right, boring part. So you'll probably put about five stitches down it until you get to the end. And when you're sewing up a set of these, which there will be four in a set, um, 
I would allow yourself about an hour. Really. Maybe just a few more. Okay, and we've gotten to the end of this side. A little insurance I do once I'm halfway through the process. Sorry, I got a little naughty bit. Okay, done. For a little insurance, I go ahead and put, and I put a knot in my thread on this, on this end here. So as I'm pulling it through, you'll see I have, this is what I'm pulling through, got the needle here, and I'm gonna fish it through twice and then pull and bam. That one side now has a knot in it. The reason why is if during a performance you have your, the thread fails and starts to unravel um, through on you, once it hits that middle knot, that's your insurance policy and that'll help you get through the end of a performance or a set without completely losing your zil. So later on, after the performance, you can go and do a needed repair. All right, so then to sew up the other side, it's not too big of a deal. It's probably just about five stitches. And the last one. And the same as before, what I'm going to do is now that I'm on an end, I'm going to go through. Sorry. Same as before. See, so yeah. there it is. I have a loop right here. I'm going to fish it through twice and then pull it, got it. So, boop, cut off the excess, and there you go. So, you now have this over, overlap on the zill. Um, it's not always pretty, and sometimes we like our zills, and especially if they're ones that we're performed with, we want them to look pretty. So what you can do is you can take it and feed that overlap so that it's very close to the zill. That way, when you put it on, okay, that way when you put it on, it's really not that noticeable. And the reason I keep the overlap on the outside is, um, it, if you put the overlap on the inside, it could it could affect the way your zill rings. Um, they're your zills. It's your performance. It's your choice, and I respect your choices. So you can keep it on the outside, or you can continue to feed it through and just have it tucked in halfway, or go ahead and feed it through a little more so that if you want the tuck to be completely on the inside you can pop it through and it's on the inside your choice if you change your mind you can always adjust it um, another thing that i do uh, when i'm sewing up a set of zills is on the thumbs i will put a yellow thread through it just on the thumbs. That way if I am doing multiple numbers and I need to throw on my zills real fast, I can grab them and just glance down at them real quick and I'll know which one is fit for the thumb and which one for the middle finger. Uh, the reason I picked yellow was because it is a, a marketing thing where yellow and black is the has the highest visibility out of color combinations. So that's why. Um, well, 
rinse and repeat. You'll have four of them to do. And I hope you liked my video and that you found it to be very informative. Thanks.